Okay, that's fine, I guess. Alright. <laughs> hey guys, so Wrestling Protection Network here. We're with the Goofballer, and we're doing uh, NXT TakeOver New Orleans predictions. So, yeah. Alright. Um, this is probably the best NXT TakeOver of all time. Um, well, at least the card looks like it. We'll see how the matches go. I'm sure they will impress. But, yeah. Alright. So, start with boring to probably, like, most exciting. Uh, first match, NXT Women's Championship. Ember Moon defends against Shayna Baszler. Who do you have winning? Shayna Baszler. So I think Ember Moon needs to move up to the main roster. Yeah, same here. <coughs> I also have Shayna Baszler. Now, I heard a couple of things which, I don't know, I thought about picking Ember Moon because of, but uh, people said, multiple prediction people have said Shayna Baszler should just honestly lose this and go up to Maine and then feud with Ronda Rousey after. I mean, she's not Mania, right yet, but She's yeah. still green. Mm -hmm. and she, she's not, like, fully yet. She's like Velveteen Dream. Like, she's amazing, and her character is, but... She still needs more time. Like, yeah. you know, figure her crap out. Alright, did you do the, uh, confidence thing? Oh, yeah, for this, I had it at, or should we say it at the end, or? I'll, we we'll just say it now. I had a four. Pretty much, con we're doing a confidence thing. Uh, one through five, because there's five matches. One being least confident to five being most confident. And I have this at a four. Um,. Yeah, I also have that as far. Uh, I'm pretty confident about it, but I'll look at that in a second. Alright, next match, uh, NXT Tag Championships. The Undisputed Era defending against Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong versus Authors of Pain. Who do you have winning this? I actually, initially I was thinking Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong, but then I just started thinking about it, and I, re I don't think it's time to take the belts off Undisputed Era yet. I think they should still have probably like Brooklyn Four is probably when I'd say they should lose it around there. Because at least wait for Bobby Fish. I almost said I thought I was wrong at, at first. I almost said Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, just wait for Bobby Fish to come back. Then maybe they lose it and go after a, a main roster title. I don't know, something like that. But. I had seen losing at Chicago too. Also, I wouldn't be surprised about that. But I also had undisputed era. I thought, yeah, like it, you said, I thought about Pete Dunne, Roderick Strong, but like, I don't know, Undisputed Era is, in my opinion, probably the best tag team in NXT right now, even without Bobby Fish, so I think yeah. they can keep it. I got a three confidence at this. Uh, it's, I'm not 100%, Authors of Pain aren't winning, they're going up to Maine after this, obviously, so yeah. yeah. What do you have for confidence? Oh, for confidence, I have this as number five because they still. I don't know. I, I, I had a weird gut feeling for a long time that Pete's on Roderick Strong are going to win, but this whole card is unpredictable. So. Yeah. Alright, um. Next, uh, the ladder match, which honestly, probably the hardest to predict on the entire card for the new North American Championship, which. I, I don't know. I, I like when I first saw. It, I thought it didn't look amazing, but the more I thought about it, I, I, it's pretty good belt. Honestly, it's like it's probably because I'm not used to the way it looks. Because every championship in WWE has a big W in the middle of it. It looks so. the same. <laughs> yeah. like all their design, like the tag belts are the same. Women's and men, like and the world titles are the same. All the NXT belts are pretty much all the same. So, I and like they they don't have enough like different belts like in 2010 when like every title belt was unique even though some of them were garbage like best in the u.s title had no prestige but still it was everything was different the world heavyweight world or wwe championship the my okay i'm just gonna stop ranting <laughs> but yeah like i i like it because there's i like more diversity with the belts so they don't all look the same all right yeah uh you could tell, like, Steven Larson, this podcast I was listening to, you could tell Triple H designed the title, because he 
he likes the old school stuff. And yeah, I, I sent you. Yeah, I sent him a picture on uh, DMs of like the new title versus like the original belt design for the United States Championship, and it's pretty similar. Yeah, like the big, like a the big red, red strap. Yeah, big red strap. I mean, mainly the U.S. title did look a bit more ugly, yeah. or really ugly, but. All right, so continuing this match, we got Adam Cole working double duty t- that night. EC3, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, Velveteen Dream, and Ricochet. A freaking amazing lineup of wrestlers in a ladder match. So uh, I'll go first for this one. I got EC3 winning. It was a really like big toss-up for me who was going to win. It was really between EC3, Velveteen Dream, and Ricochet. I was thinking about Adam Cole. Honestly, it depends on when this match comes in the night because it, if it happens first, I could see them possibly, him possibly winning. But I feel like the tag title is gonna happen before this match. It'll be wore out for this match. But yeah, I got EC3 winning. It, Sorry, I was about to say something. I was, I was just gonna say it. It go, it kind of fits his character because he's saying he's like in the top one percent. So if he, did, yeah, I mean, you could go now. Sorry, didn't okay. mean to cut you off. Oh, actually, I like was cutting you off. But uh, I have Velveteen Dream just because I think EC three should probably go after the NXT title. Like I think he should start a feud in the meantime and then go after the world title because like his whole gimmick is like the best. Um, I don't. I think they don't give it to one of the newcomers i think they give it to one of their more familiar faces in velveteen dream <clears throat> and like velveteen dream could like really use it because he's an incredible wrestler he's just charismatic as hell uh i don't think am cole's gonna win it because i was watching it was like the cultaholic predictions and they were like well if am cole and kyle riley are gonna be carrying the tag belts it doesn't make sense to give cole another belt to defend. Yeah. And Killian Dane and Lars Sullivan, I can't really see winning it, so that leaves the whole team dream. And I really like him. Yeah. I, I, I gave this a one. It's the hardest match to predict on the card, I, honestly. I gave it my opinion. Th- All right. Next, probably going to be the match of the night. We'll see the unsanctioned match between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. You can go first. All right, this one was really tough for me, honestly. I gave it to Tommaso Ciampa, man. Johnny Gargano goes up to the main roster. Uh, I picked Johnny Gargano because oh. I was listening to some NXT predictions and originally I, I was going Ciampa. I literally, at, first thing I wrote down when I made this, I had Ciampa and it was number five, like most confident. And I thought about it more and I was like, Wait, watching. five is most confident? Yeah. I thought one was most confident. Oh. <laughs> All right, you, you can do whatever. I don't really care at this point, honestly. But uh, pretty much, I like people are talking, and I they're saying Johnny probably is gonna have another match with Champa at like Brooklyn or something, which I could see happening. I I'm fine with him going to Maine too, but uh, I feel like Johnny probably should win this for a feel good moment. But, I don't know. I don't... Yeah. I don't know. I think Tommaso should win this just because right now the biggest... The two biggest heels in wrestling, at least American wrestling, are Cody Rhodes. Or, sorry, just Cody. Can't call him that. And, uh... Tommaso Ciampa. And if WWE really wants to have, like, the top heel, like, Tommaso Ciampa winning this match would just absolutely get him so much heat. Like, WWE could have the biggest heel in wrestling, even more than Cody, if he wins this. Yeah. Because, like, he's just so easy to hate. I mean, then again, the reason why Cody's hate is because everybody loves Kenny Omega. But the reason why Champa's hate is because everybody hates Johnny Gargano. Opposite. Or, everybody loves Johnny Gargano, so. Yeah. If Tommaso wins this, <coughs> it would just be nuclear heat. I don't know. It's it's a really tough one. I'd be fine with either. Uh, it's going to be a loud match, that's for sure. <laughs> yep. Alright, and I had a two on that, because after... Yeah, I thought it was pretty hard to predict after a while. But, alright, NXT Championship. 
Andrade Cien Almas versus Alistair Black. Uh, I'll start with this. I have Alistair Black winning. Uh, I don't know. Like, I was thinking for a while Almas should retain, but, like, I don't know. Like, Alistair Black, a lot, of, like, Triple H even said it. Alistair Black is, like, the biggest thing in NXT going right now, probably besides Johnny Gargano. And... Alistair Black's going to stay longer in NXT than Johnny Gargano, so he's going to have to carry. And I think Alistair Black winning this is probably the best decision. Plus, Almas, like, I could see Almas, like, probably going for it again at, like, Chicago 2. Yeah. And then probably going to Maine after that, or after SummerSlam, maybe. So, yeah. Yeah, I have on Alistair Black, too, because, yeah, I think he's feuds with uh, Alistair one more time, like, or not feuds them one more time, has one more match with him at the next TakeOver to Chicago, and I think he goes up to Maine, because Andrade's been in the in NXT for a while, it's just only recently he's been <clears throat> relevant, and he is so main roster ready, like, yeah, he can't cut, a pro <laughs> he can't cut promos in English, but, that's why Zelina's there, exactly, and he is an amazing wrestler, and he's one of the <clears throat> biggest, like, heels in NXT, of course. Probably second to Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. And, yeah, his feud with Johnny Gargano easily made him a hateable heel. So I think moving him to the main roster and putting him against, like, AJ... Ooh, against AJ Styles or something like that would be amazing. I, I just saw that. I'm like, that would be an amazing match. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not going to say stop ranting. I'm trying to... Loses to Alistair. Uh, I don't know. Like, for some reason, I'm, like, most confident in that happening. I don't know why, but I have it. It just doesn't make sense to end Alistair's undefeated streak right now. Yeah. Like, that... I don't think he should lose his streak in NXT. I think it should be, like, a WrestleMania. They should, give, they should give Alistair a WrestleMania streak when he moves up to the main roster. Yeah, really should. Uh, he's like, I like, once again, Steve Larson said this. I don't know why I keep quoting him today, but like, honestly, Alistair Black is like WWE's next, like, CM Punk figure. Like, except they are, they're actually behind him. Yeah, pretty much. That's the only difference. And Triple H likes him. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> And he so, didn't really like CM Punk at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing here is CM Punk was kind of hard to deal with, too, compared to Alistair, which I'm sure he's really easy to deal with in the back. Probably doesn't complain about anything. Yeah. But, yeah, okay, so that's our NXT TakeOver predictions. It's already 13 minutes long. I thought this was going to be, like, five minutes long, but, you know, we started talking. It's a but, hard TakeOver to predict, though. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Go check out our Mania predictions, which will be up after this video. Go check out his channel. We're going to be doing mock drafts for NFL. Yep, finally going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> we've been holding it off for like, what, a month now? But since there's been like three trades that's happened, so. Yeah. Alright, well, see you guys.